Hey viewers, welcome to another game of Casual Pro Gamer. Today, yeah, I'm I'm so surprised by this. We are doing Jungle Ash, and uh, <laughs> yeah, another item popping up up here. It's kind of crazy. So I mentioned Jungle Ash like two days ago, and today all of a sudden, bam, in my inbox, Jungle Ash. <laughs> it's so cool. You guys are so great. <laughs> Oh my god, it's just, I mention one build and then someone says, well, I can do that. <laughs> he sends me a game and this is going to be a very good game apparently. So we are going to go for Jungle Ash here, which is going to be awesome. So Jungle Ash works very well from level 6 onwards because then of course with the Crystal Arrow she has a very good way to gank. With a stun and a good slow, as well as a ton of damage. And are we going to start off at red here? Because that would be great. That would mean she can gank almost immediately. So Ash gets a free critical strike on her first hit. As you can see, already 63% now. And it's going up by 3% every 3 seconds. Yep. So by the time the minions spawn, it will be um, uh, it will be at a hundred percent, and of course uh, that is a great amount of extra damage. Well, it's actually does just fifty three extra damage, but you can see how that helps out quite a lot. Of course, we would like to see some help on uh, on this red buff anyway. Oh, how did? Okay, I was concentrating a little bit too much there on the ash position. <laughs> the enemy team obviously noticing that um, there's an Ash jungle, so they want to counter jungle that, and they think, well, she's going for blue. And this is a great, great uh, way to come in. And oh, yeah, he doesn't notice that there are people there, obviously, and it's going to be a first blood. Everyone gets 58 gold, and they get a free. Uh, blue buff. So yeah, the um, uh, the the oh come on, Rumble, making a very big mistake there. Uh, you either stand in the bush, which is the risky option, or you just stand like over here somewhere. Well, over here would be the best. And you can see the blue buff. You can also see the entrance to your jungle, the normal entrance, and. Yeah, there's only one way to get ganked, and if you um, don't pick your skill yet, so you would be able to uh, to pick the shield slash movement speed buff, and you should be able to run out of there. But in this case, yeah, the enemy getting a blue buff steal. So Omumu starting off with enemy blue buff, but that doesn't really mean a whole lot, because Ash can just steal his blue buff, and should be fine with that. They didn't put a ward up for some reason. And some nice strategy there on Ash. Actually standing just out of range, but every time she attacks, the raid is going to follow her anyway. I'm going to charge up the stun for 9%. And she didn't get lucky. Oh, that's unfortunate. Well, she did get lucky because she could hit him, but... Uh <laughs> So yeah, they ping the Ash, and it seems that well, the enemy team is going to give the blue buff to uh, Fizz right away. That is of course very painful when that happens straight away. Come on, get that gank off. Come on, one more. Yes, nicely done. Nicely done. Nice reaction by the rest of the team too. And an excellent, excellent gank there. So she gets the damage done. Fortunately, as I said, the rest of the team was paying attention. And Ash is going to do some heavy damage on this guy. Graves coming in as well. And come on, they need to finish this kill because he can't yeah, he can't be allowed to survive that kind of uh, an overextension. And yes, they did put down a pink ward and well this team did see it. So they should be able to counter ward that pink ward. A movement coming in here, but he's not getting anything done, so that's excellent. Obviously, you want to uh, avoid getting killed by a jungler at any cost, and yeah, actually, 
uh, Swain not really worried about that and decides to turn on him and just get a whole lot of damage done. So uh, who got that first kill on the enemy team? It is Umumu that's the best one for our team to get it, I think. Uh, well, Alistar might be even a better option, but still Umumu getting fed is not a problem. Uh, in the late game all he can do is just ult in, or no, use his ult and his uh, stun and that's it. That's what he does in a team fight. And then after that you just ignore him. Because he does very low damage. Ash coming in here. And are they going to be able to? Yes, he is going to survive. And Ash is going to finish this kill. Come on. Yes, nicely done. And there you see, Jungle Ash. Large amount of damage. Also has the CC. So it's kind of like Shivana jungle. But with not only the damage, also the CC. And of course, once she gets the level 6 stun, that is going to be awesome sauce. Because that is just the way it is. So by the way, I got some uh, some questions from people. Uh, what games I would like to see? I will once again mention anything that's not on my, that hasn't been on my uh, channel for like the last, let's say, 50 to yeah, let's say 50 games. That is acceptable, as in, uh, or well, that's preferred. If it, it hasn't been on my channel for like a hundred games, then that is of course even more preferred and I don't really keep track I should keep track of the champions I do but I generally select from what I uh, what people send to me Jungle Ash of course the main exception troll games always get on my channel first pentakills always get on my channel first kind of the interesting games to watch because I don't want to become kind of a standard channel where every gameplay is the same I want to have interesting gameplays, and interesting gameplays are not so much the high scoring gameplays, they are the interesting strategies, the kind of new plays, things that nobody has seen before, or not a whole lot of games have been seen before. Because, well, Jungle Ash, it has been done before, I mentioned that in um, the game where I mentioned Jungle Ash. Uh, I saw one of the top teams do this, I also saw them do um, uh, support Ash. Which also works out pretty well. And it works out because uh, yeah, if you if you play it well then it does a lot of damage and that's exactly what you want out of this. You want to have that ganking potential and uh, yeah so the, the uh, viable and unviable strategies as long as you make it work in some way uh, even if you die a lot and if you don't get any kills if it works for your team so if you're not completely feeding and being useless then it's a valid strategy for me and I would like to see it obviously if you have a great comeback that is way more interesting to watch than having a 20 and 0 gameplay which obviously draw more um, more viewers I mean that's just the way it is if I put up a 50 and 3 gameplay of some dude then that is going to draw a whole lot of viewers from outside of my channel so people who aren't subscribed to me but I'm not really that interested in that I'm pretty sure the viewers will come if I just keep making videos and wow this guy gets away that was such a mistake they should have chased that but yeah <laughs> Fizz not able to chase that apparently and Amumu definitely not able to chase that. So kill uh, on top lane here. I really are still at full health, so must have uh, harassed quite a bit before this kill. And indeed, he's at half health, and he is going to get killed because of that. Yep, there we go. Two stacks of the ultimate, even still, uh, well, available. And Ash is going to uh, keep on jungling. <laughs> wow, she's been doing a good job here. Already involved in three out of the four kills. And another ward gets taken down. Yeah, if you know they pink warded over here, which they should know because they saw it happen. Um, you should ward like over here. Because that's out of range and it still gives you all the vision you need. So... Yeah, maybe they thought it was timed out, or maybe this is a new pink ward, I didn't really notice. It might be a new pink ward, actually. So the blue buff will go to Swain here. Well, he's Swain a little bit too early with his uh, with his skills. 
And he's going to have a hard time getting this buff now. Yeah, he still gets it. But Ash taking a lot of damage for that. Uh, he should have just auto attacked and then nuked it down at the last moment. But yeah, well, it's all good. Ash, yeah, using her smite on that, obviously. But, um, but Ash going for the uh, Riggle's Lantern here. Which is a very fine uh, item for her. Especially in the jungle, of course, uh, because you want to have that jungle speed, and Ash doesn't have a lot of jungle speed early on. Because, well, <laughs> she's Ash. She's not supposed to go up against jungle minions. And she's not supposed to take that much damage. But yeah, as I said, it does work, and it can work really well. And Ash currently at level 6, so she should be able to do a lot of uh, good with that. Uh, with that ultimate. The uh, Swain getting another kill here on the Fizz, which is surprising because Fizz should be able to nuke down uh, Swain pretty fast and then get out of there. So not so much kill the entire, uh, the entire Swain, but just do a lot of damage and then get out of there. The stun going off, the slow from uh, Rumble coming in a little bit too soon. Uh, should have waited for the flash and should have put it across the lane instead of in the direction of, well, the turret. Because it's a lot harder to, uh, well, to avoid when you put it across the lane instead of in the length of the lane. And Ash is going to counter jungle here. That is interesting. So it seems that Irelia is coming this way though. And Ash will have to back off. Yeah, Aria is going to follow. But Rumble is going to come in. And Rumble is going to be able to help out Ash. They're going to chase away this Aridia. Not really able to kill her because she ran back. But nice save there by, uh, by the Rumble. And that's definitely what Ash needed. So they're... Um, yeah, the two enemy champions coming back in, Amumu there as well. They could have spotted him. Pretty sure they didn't because they were kind of concentrated on uh, on getting out of there. And it is really hard to keep an eye on the minimap when you're trying to keep an eye on what the enemy champion is doing that is following you. So most of the time people will miss that. Uh, Amumu standing here at a very strange spot, not even in a bush. He is trying to come in here and misses his Q. Yeah, that's not how you use that. That's not how you gank. You you gank by running in there. Then if someone tries to run out, so you, you start attacking them. And if someone tries to run out, then you use your Q to stun them. After that, you use your ultimate. Or the reverse order, of course, which is also fine. So a pink ward by the blue team this time. They keep pink warding the same bush. And counter pink warding the same bush, which is kind of cute. And wow, Graves doing a lot of damage there on uh, on the, uh, the 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 Alistar. So Mumu coming in here in the middle once more. Yeah, he lands the stun, but it really doesn't do a whole lot. And that's why you don't do it like this. It closes the gap, but Mumu doesn't need to close the gap. Mumu does doesn't do a whole lot of damage. Wow, a nice kill there by uh, uh, Graves. And, well, another assist for uh, for our Ash here. She is currently at four kills. Well, she assisted in four out of the six kills. Uh, two of them were for her and two of them were for other guys. And, of course, yeah, it doesn't really matter whether you get the kill or one of your uh, teammates. As long as you help out, as long as you make sure that you can, uh, you are useful. That is awesome sauce, and that is of course what Ash is at this moment. She is awesome sauce. Now that um, crystal arrow helping out a lot in these ganks, and yeah, it does have a one minute cooldown, I believe, a uh, 100 second at this moment, so a minute and a half cooldown. 
Which kind of means that she can only gank like every two minutes. Realistically. So getting the red buff here. And is not going for the raids. Is she going straight for blue buff? So yeah, that's um, it's also the reason why you shouldn't waste your arrow uh, in the, especially in the early game, uh, on like a chance to get a stun off. No, you need to use it, um, yeah, in a controlled manner, in a way that you know it's going to have a high chance of hitting. And but uh, what's more important, if it hits. It needs you need to be able in a normal circumstances to land a kill because of it. And yeah, Ash standing a little bit too far back, but nicely done, giving the blue buff to Swain there. Swain of course going to be doing really well with it. I don't know what that ultimate was about, but Rumble using his ultimate on the minions. And there you go here. If he had the ultimate now. They would have been able to chase this, but now not so much. And of course, yeah, the flash was still up on uh, on Irelia. So Ash, no. Yeah, now it's too late, but she could have jumped to the next bush. And of course, yeah, with the... <laughs> wow, another pink ward. With uh, the... Uh, the crystal arrow gone, uh, the ganking potential of Ash is a lot lower. But she can still get the slow off, and Rumble can get a slow off. And together they should be able to grab this kill, but I really are just too strong, too tanky. She has uh, 75 armor, 99 magic resist. So you can see how that is uh, a problem for them. So they see Fizz coming in. Yeah, the Hawkshot. Uh, is really useful if you use it well. And another uh, ward going down. I think that was the Riggles ward. Yep, that was the Riggles ward. Nice use of that, of course. And she's going to run into Fizz here. And Fizz is going to do some damage and then run out. And he should be safe. He actually flashed for that. Wow. Well, he already used his, um, his jump. So the only way to get out of that was, uh, well, was that that flash? So yeah, the um, Amumu once again coming in with that stun and therefore not getting that uh, kill. Unfortunately, yeah, Swain runs straight into <laughs> the enemy champion running up to the, to his lane, and. Yeah, he gets killed because of that, but they still get a one for one trade, so it's all good. And Irelia is now in a little bit of trouble, but she is still able to run out of that. Because, well, it's Irelia. She is so hard to kill, just one on one. Unless you can harass her quite a lot, and then still have all your skills up to finish her off. But of course, yeah, <laughs> that is not the case here. And they need to just try to prevent her from far farming too much because she's already at 127 minions and the only one close to that is Graves in the bottom lane and Corky actually at 106 and nobody or no second uh, party in our team is uh, close to that so I really are getting wits end making her even more tanky but also allowing her to do more damage and that of course is um, yeah kind of hard to deal with because now she has even more magic resist and another gank let's call it gank coming in from uh, Amumu using a stun to get in there but yeah nobody to follow up so it's it's just a useless use of a skill it does like a hundred damage and then you have to run out because nobody can follow that up so you have to yeah, if you play a Mumu, if you like to play a Mumu, and apparently lots of people do like to play a Mumu, because I get a lot of a Mumu games. Um, yeah, if you like to play a Mumu, then you should really try to study the way his ganks work, because if you do that incorrectly, and now they finally have a ward over here, which is a much better spot than over here or over here. 
But if you study how his ganks work, then you can get a whole lot more done with a whole lot less utili uh, use of your spells. Which means that you get um, a lot more kills for the same amount of mana and time and things like that. So, yeah, they do spot him because he's on top of a ward. And the red team wants to go in on the Swain, but Swain is well aware of the fact that there's an Amumu in his bush. Top lane is in some trouble, but yeah, once again, Iridia just flashes out and will be okay. So another red buff here for uh, Ash, going to give the blue buff once again to Swain. Blue buff is not up yet, but it will be up in uh, a little bit, assuming that nobody took it. Didn't really see it, but no, I think she, you know, there it is. I think she's just really well aware of when her buffs spawn. Maybe she puts it in the chat, maybe she just, well, knows when it's up. I mean, a good jungler will put it in the chat, because that way you can never forget it, and you can always look up when it is up. And if you want to avoid typing a whole lot, then uh, you can turn on the... What's it called? Time something? It's in the options. Let me see if I can uh, find it. I think it's in more options. Show timestamps. That's the one. If you put that on, like I have, then every time you type something in the chat, it um, oh <laughs> it will give you a timestamp. So if you type blue at 17.59, then obviously you're going to notice that five minutes later your blue is up. So you only have to uh, type like OB, our blue, or TB, their blue. And you will be fine in that regard. So you can also, yeah, type the full time, of course. But this this way, it takes you half a second to do that, and you still get the timers. So are they going to be able to pick this guy up? Oh, he did see him come in, but I think he was already shopping. Oh, Ash Arrow narrowly missing there, but they do get a triple kill here, even though the Ash Arrow missed. And a very nice triple kill. So they did see him coming, but I think uh, that Corky was already shopping and he wasn't paying attention to the map anymore. He thought he got out, but it's always very risky to do that. He could have easily gotten out if um, if he still had his Valkyrie up. Well, if he just ran straight to here, he would have been fine as well. But yeah, well, people very rarely do that in uh, in games. People normally make these kind of mistakes. Well, it's not actually a mistake, they're just too greedy. They want to get back in the lane uh, as soon as they can and they will recall at the first opportunity they get instead of just running to a safe situation, spending five more seconds on that. And it's just a, a matter of being greedy. So Ash using the hawk shot to make sure that nobody is trying to gank her. Well, she is going for this and she currently has her BF swords. So she's um, ob obviously a lot slower than an Ash would be in lane. But she can get a whole lot of things done. So a nice ultimate this time from, uh, from Rumble. And they are going to grab a kill because of that. Unfortunately Ash dies. But they're going to come on, grab a kill. No! No! It actually didn't work. Oh my god. So it's a one for one trade. It's going to be a one for two trade. Yeah, and Irelia is going to survive once again at low health. Swain is going to come in though. And he is not going to be able to catch up here. Oh, he might. Yeah. Oh, that was a very poor reaction and he should of course have run this way because he can see here where she's going and man he missed her yeah that was a very poor pass on his part have to, it's it's a split second decision but you have to know what decision you should make there and obviously you're not going to catch them over there 
So just to steal the red buff already. Come on. This is getting a little bit crazy. Letting all these people get away. And yep, he does grab the red buff. That's excellent. Should put that in the chat, of course. And yeah, there is no dragon at this moment. Don't know who took it. Didn't really watch that, but I'm assuming the enemy jungler did take that at some point. Because we haven't seen Ash do that. So the whole team collapsing on this Swain, and Swain not really happy about it, <laughs> obviously. So Ash coming in, but there are a lot of wards. Is this a ranked game or what? Because this, there are so many wards. It is crazy. So yeah, normally we see about like one or two wards on the map, but this time, yeah, we see. Um, oh, let's see. We see one, two, three, four, five wards out for the blue team. And they are going on the Irelia here. And there's someone coming in from behind. And I don't think they noticed him until he actually ulted in. Oh, so close, but Irelia is once again going to survive. It is getting so annoying. Did she die at all? Yeah, she died once. Uh, anyhow, <laughs> the red team has one, two wards out. So. I think they had a ward over here somewhere as well when I said it, but it's all good. It's all good. Yeah, so lots of wards out. And yeah, now there's another ward out here. And that's what makes me think this is a ranked game. And going jungle ash in a ranked game, that is uh, pretty ballsy. Because not a lot of people will allow you to get away with that. Um, well, not so much. Yeah. If if you fail, then they're going to report you, and that is the risk of trolling in ranked games. Obviously, that's what the normal games are for, because Riot really doesn't care what you do in a normal game. Uh, well, uh, build-wise. Obviously, they do care about whether or not you uh, you behave badly, but trolling in, in normal games is pretty much allowed. So... And while well, Jungle Ash is not so much a troll build, uh, it's just a very, very unconventional build. But you can get a lot of things done with it, as I said. Especially with the stun. Okay, it's not a Mumu. A Mumu has a double stun, and uh, that is just even better. Come on, attack him. No, <laughs> not able to. Dominating. So yeah, the um, Irelia is getting kind of out of hand. She has six kills already. And it's really dangerous to have a fed Irelia on the enemy team. Fortunately, Swain has a lot of kills too. And they are ahead by four kills. And by about 2k gold. So all in all, it's a good deal. They, uh, they are doing very well. And hopefully, this will actually... Uh, carry on to the late game and yeah the, the 2k golds may be due to uh, the extra minions I'm not actually sure because they were behind in minions earlier but now they have three guys over 100 one over 200 and Mitino has one over 200 but then one at 180 and so the enemy team has two fed champions uh, one super fed the Irelia and one just fed, that's the Corky. But Corky building uh, the Trinity Force, and yeah, you may know that I hate Trinity Force as a first item. It is only good on a very select number of champions. Yeah, normally it's not very good because uh, it doesn't add a whole lot. And come on, kill him, go, get a minion. So yeah, the uh, Irelia coming in and killing the, well not coming in, but Irelia killing the Rumble once again. And they do pick up a double kill over here, which is excellent. And Swain didn't even die, so that is good as well. So it's a 
two for zero? Yeah, it's a two for zero. Even though they didn't get Amumu. The Amumu was their first target. <laughs> but he got out again, so... Yeah, they're having real trouble finishing off the kills. Which is, of course, the most important part of ganking. Finishing off the kills. I mean, you don't get any gold or experience from killing people 99%. But the 100% is the only thing that counts. Well, yeah, you don't get any gold and experience from that. Still counts for a little bit. And I really am now with the Guardian Angel. Wow, this is so painful. And she is going to be super, super annoying in the late game. So let's hope that they can actually kill Corky straight away in team fights. That way uh, only Irelia does damage. And um, yeah, they should just try to avoid getting into a fight with Irelia um, in a team fight. Should try to uh, pick on her a little bit, just harass her until she's about half health, then engage on her, and that should be good enough to kill her. But yeah, Irelia, the only one with any real gold on the enemy team, because Corky with zero kills. Only has his 215 minions, which is still a lot, obviously, but it's not as much as uh, as it could have been. Two guys getting away at low health, but oh, the ward in the bush resulting in two kills. That is why we ward the bushes. So, yeah, this guy's dead. And Ash is in some trouble. No, she dies as well. I really like grabbing another kill. It's an unassisted kill, so that's... That's good. And I really are low, but still has a guardian angel, so they shouldn't overextend for that. What the hell is Graves doing there? He misses everything and gets killed. And then of course, yeah, Sraka couldn't really help getting killed there as well. I mean they could have just towered uh, towered over her if um, if Graves dies. But Graves overextending very much there and yeah Soraka just going with him. She shouldn't have gone with him, she should have known better and just let him die. <laughs> but yeah that's the way it is. You try to protect your carry and uh, you die sometimes because of that. So enemy team gets another kill out of this. And yep, Ash going to go back to her jungle going to pick up this uh, this red buff I think because they have no chance of stopping this Baron uh, dragon sorry uh, although she might be able to steal it with no I don't think she stole it there hang on let me see let me see because I want to make sure that I get it this time who gets the yeah, she, she wasn't in time to get the volley off. No, they get it way before the arrow. So, yeah. But yeah, it, it would be kind of annoying if I didn't, know, didn't notice that. So that's why I rewind it there. Anyhow, um, yeah, Ash just going for her jungle, which is... Um, Probably the best thing she can do. All of the lanes are kind of in the middle, and she, there are no opponents visible. I mean, as you can see, nobody's visible, and that means that the um, safest way to go is just go grab the minions in the jungle. So, yeah, Aurelia engaging on the support there, but. Yeah, nothing is going to come of that. Unfortunately, she can heal up so quickly that even if you damage her, it doesn't really matter. And she is so super tanky. She has 200 armor and 172 magic resist. And yeah, that is just really annoying to deal with. Plus, of course, she has... Like, I don't know how much it is, it's 40 plus 35, it's 75% tenacity. That is just crazy mode, man. 
So yeah, you can get some extra tenacity, I believe, from uh, from the masteries. I'm not actually sure though. I think you can go uh, go even higher, but yeah, it doesn't matter. 75% is good enough. So in team fights, that is, if there are three or more champions, what was it? Yeah, three or more champions, she gets the 40% from that, and the 35% that she standard has from her boots. So hitting her with the ash arrow would be, well, <laughs> not good. Also hitting the Alistar would be no, uh, no good, because he can just use his ultimate if he needs to get out of that. And otherwise he's just going to take the, the arrow and be fine, because he is pretty tanky on his own. Even without any uh, any items, and he doesn't have any items. So the only one, as I said, with any real gold is this uh, Irelia. She has 14k and 9k on uh, Amuru and Corky. So they nuke down the. Wow, nicely done. They nuke down the Irelia straight away. Get a double kill out of that, and yeah. That was exactly the way that's supposed to work. I mean, I said they should nuke down Corky, which is still the best option because he's way less tanky. But he wasn't available for the nuke, so <laughs> might as well get the other guy. And yeah, this was a two, for, a three for one, tr a three for zero trade. No, actually, Amumu was already dead, so two for zero trade. And Amelia is really out leveling everyone there. Because she actually has a much, much longer respawn time. Not actually sure how I can see all of the levels, but let's just see how she's... Uh, oh, I can't read that at all. Uh, level 18. So yeah, she is out-leveling everyone by a lot. Everyone recalling here. Yeah, there's not a lot to do. Except get the wolves and get the raids and get the golems. But yeah, this guy also level 18 it seems. Hang on, because it's kind of hard to read when he's moving. And yeah, all of the others like level 14, level 13. Ash is currently level 14, level 16. And this guy is level 18 as well. Wow, that's impressive. Well, he has been farming all game, so I would expect that. 250 millions on him, so he's keeping track with the Iridia. A little bit behind, but has been a little bit behind all game. So he's keeping up at least. And the 10 millions really don't matter that much if you have 250 millions. So um, he should be doing pretty well in a team fight. Has the Infinity Edge, the Bloodthirster and the Phantom Dancer. And the Bloodthirster is... Uh, not stacked yet, so he must have just bought that because only two minions were killed <laughs> since he bought that. And yeah, he needs to uh, do a little more with that because yeah, those th that that little bit of um, extra life steal in fact makes up for everything. So yeah, hitting her with the ash arrow, as I said, does nothing. And yeah, there <laughs> there you saw that. You saw that in action. And oh my god, lots of damage going off on the enemy team. But Irelia once again getting nuked down. This time they do pick up a kill back for that, or two kills for that. But they should be able to nuke down at least the Amumu and the uh, Alistar if they just turn around. Yeah, come on, just turn, just go. Get everyone. Double kill, come on, triple kill, there we go, get the Mumu. Yeah, he could see the Mumu now, and they are going to catch up with Mumu here. Come on, catch him. So this is going to be a Quadra. <laughs> nicely done, nicely done. Don't know if he got all five though, but... He got four at least, so... <laughs> That is pretty good. And yeah, now they're going to be able to get that turret. Yeah, nuking down the Irelia really quickly, even if it costs you two champions, that is well worth it. Because then 
they don't have any damage anymore because only Corky will be available and Corky doesn't do nearly as much damage as uh, as Graves does. Plus Graves has all the lifesteal, Corky has virtually no lifesteal. Plus he doesn't do that much damage. And bye bye Irelia. <laughs> oh, how, how did she think that would work out? I mean, he has lifesteal and lifesteal is so overpowered that even an Irelia that's this fat cannot go up against, uh, well, a similarly fat uh, Graves. Even though Irelia is building full tank and um, yeah, Graves is building full damage, so in principle they should, uh, well, the, the tankiness should provide her with enough of a defense. But yeah, the uh, the defense of lifesteal is just ridiculous. It is way better than anything else in the game. So yeah, the um, they they are now currently ahead by quite a bit, uh, 56 to 52. So they're 4k gold ahead. And yeah, that's due to this last team fight, of course, and Iria suiciding in afterwards. Of course, the Baron did help, and um, all in all, just a good good deal for them. And is he going to take another one? Yes, he is. Didn't know how mu how far his one uh, timed out, but he didn't get the one on the enemy side, so it was definitely an older blue buff. Who got that one, by the way? Did he get that? Who got that? I don't know. We saw them take out the blue buff earlier. Did Swain just take two blue buffs there? That is kind of strange then. Yeah. Apparently he did. So yeah, I could have given that to Ash, for example, to get that crystal arrow up quicker. That's the ultimate for those of you who don't know. And of course the volley spam would be excellent if you have a blue buff. Because you get all the mana you need and you, you would get the cooldown reduction that you need. Watch it guys, watch it. How did you miss that? How, how, how did you miss that? Swain getting killed here instantly. And who is this? Oh that's Aridia once again. I think. Double kill for Graves once again. He is going to own this whole team. And there you go. Triple kill. Quadra kill. Now was that a Penta? Yeah. Wow. Impressive. That was excellent. But yeah, here you see the advantages of having a well-fed uh, AD carry with a lot of lifesteal. It is completely ridiculous, but especially the damage he does. And yeah, the build for uh, Corky is way uh, way more harassment based, so he cannot really do a whole lot in team fights. And of course, yeah, the he doesn't do nearly as much damage as Graves. He doesn't have the Phantom Dancer. He doesn't have the Bloodthirster. And yeah, of course that's 16 kills versus 2 kills. That kind of makes a big difference. So, yeah, getting tagged up a little by the tower. And, yeah, could have taken out the tower there. But decides to back off. And they need to go on this one. I mean, lots of minions here. Free tower. That's, that's a good deal. And they can see that 3 champions are mid. Now they can see 4. So, yeah, they can also see that they're no longer in mid lane now. But they still have this Soraka here. Oh, misses the ultimate there. Oh, 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 oh. This is going to be, well, just an escape for these two. There's really nothing they can do. And a flash for Amumu. Only he fails it. Even if he landed that, would have done nothing. He doesn't even have his ultimate up. So, yeah. 
I don't know. I don't know what the plan was there from Amumu. Oh, he does have his ultimate up. Never mind. Apparently didn't use it in the last team fight, or the last team fight is already a minute and a half ago. Might be it as well. Oh, he did use it in that team fight. Yeah, because he used it really early on to get the Swain kill. Well, not the actual kill, but yeah, to catch the Swain and someone else finished it off. I don't know who. But I really had died way too quickly in that fight, even though she had the Guardian Angel up. And, I mean, I assume that was her, because it was someone with the Guardian Angel, and she's the only one with a Guardian Angel. Yep. So another Baron for the blue team here. And they are going to go in and get some killing done. So Jungle Ash allows you to do a lot more damage as you can see. It, uh, getting the two AD carries, uh, well for free. And still having the tankiness from Swain and Rumble that allows you to do a whole lot more damage without the investment of another tanky jungler. And of course the Soraka on the team, yeah, that is very useful as well. The armor buff plus the magic resist buff from her innate, the armor buff from her heal of course. That uh, is going to provide you with a lot of goodness and um, yeah, they need to back off a little. Come on Soraka, yeah, they are going to kill both turrets now. Because only this Fizz is still alive and Fizz is going to attempt to snipe Ash here. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I figured. But it's not going to matter, and they are going to uh, kill the Nexus and finish this game. Wow, very nicely played, and nice that there's a pentakill in here. I, well, didn't expect it anymore. I did say so in the email, but yeah, you never know. A lot of people will call it a pentakill when someone kills five guys in a row. That's why I was wondering whether he had um, the pentakill right there when he uh, he killed four and I was wondering whether the fifth one was also his and that was then the pentakill. But it was an actual pentakill. So uh, yeah, I, I, like, I like Jungle Ash. Turned out 5-5-18. Five, five, that is a whole lot of kills you provided there. And of course the ward, the Riggles Lantern ward is so useful if you're a jungler. And yeah, it worked out really well. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed and I will see you next time. GG.